standing at the front of your mat. And take a moment and close your eyes to reach and spread through each and every one of your toes. Allow them to root back into the earth. And allow your body to begin to sway or move gently, slightly forward and back and side to side. And as you do, can you just sense the way that your feet feel against the floor or your mat or whatever surface is beneath you. Let's see if you can find center. Where all the edges of your feet make some contact with the earth. And then firm up through your thighs. Feel this little drop of your tailbone down, a little lift through your lower belly up. And take that right shoulder, pull it forward up towards your ear and then slide it back and down and try not to move your chest with it. Just allow that right shoulder to take a bit of a circle. And then reverse direction. So squeezing back, elevate, pull it forward and draw it back down towards your thigh. The hand should be able to stay against the line of your leg. And the right hand stays, left shoulder does the same thing, pulls forward, up, back, and down. Your fingertips continue to sense your thigh. Your feet are grounded, your breath is easy, reverse directions. The eyes are closed if at all possible. And, and then spread your feet out a little bit further as the arms come to still beside you. We're going to bend the knees just a little bit. Get kind of centered and heavy through your legs and then buoyant through the upper body. And that right hand's going to slide down your right thigh, reaching towards your knee, and you'll round your back a little bit. Left arm can follow, almost like a broken doll. And tucking your chin in towards your chest, can you allow your body to kind of drip? The right knee might bend a little bit more. The left leg might try to stay in a slightly straighter organization. The right arm drips down. The left arm is followed. And then draw yourself back up. Imagine just pulling yourself up through the left shoulder. And then left hand slides down left thigh. Bend your knees. Roll your right shoulder forward and down. That right hand gets heavy, the left arm is even heavier, maybe that left knee bends a little bit more. Your chin can tuck in towards your chest, so there's a stretch down the back side of your body, particularly right side in this organization. Imagine leading with your right shoulder, Draw yourself back up, breathe in, reach your arms up towards the sky, maybe blink open your eyes. As you exhale, bend your knees, fold forward towards the earth. Inhale, halfway lift, roll your shoulders back and lift through your heart. Exhale, fold and empty a little bit deeper towards your thighs. Bend your knees, press to your heels, breathe and rise all the way up. And hands to your heart, bring it in. And then again, inhale, reach it to the sky. Exhale, forward fold, bending the knees as much as needed. Then halfway lift, touch your shins, lift your heart. Fold and empty all of the breath out. Bend your knees, root through your heels and rise. And bring your hands to your heart, exhale. Inhale, reach it to the sky. Forward fold, bow. Inhale to lengthen your body. And step back, downward facing dog. Walk your feet a little wider than your hips. Root down through your heels. If they need to step in a little bit, let them. Press your hands forward and then wrap the triceps under your body just a little bit more. 
Keep your left hand pressing down. Take your right arm back and see if you can find the outside of your left leg. And then bend your right elbow and kind of give yourself a little pull, even a pause. Right hand comes back. Left arm reaches under, outside edge of the right leg, anywhere that you feel is stable for you. And a little bit of a bend into that left elbow if you have some room. Left arm stretches forward. And as you exhale, walk your hands back towards your feet. Bend your knees. Sink your hips. Malasana. Take your arms out in front. And then just from there, flex your fingers up towards the ceiling. Pull your fingernails back. Press your palms forward. We're going to protract our scapula. So push the floor away. And retract. Pull the shoulder blades together. Push forward. Keep the arms straight. Pull back. Retract. Press forward. Pull back. And once more, press forward, pull back. Now keep the push forward, hold there, flex those fingernails down. Hands come back up towards the front of your space and then hover your knees up off the floor. So hover in tabletop if you can. Press into your fingernail beds even more. Can you shift your weight slightly forward and shift your weight back? And if this is too much, your knees just come down to the ground. Shift forward, shift back. Slight protraction through your scapula, arms are straight, knees are hovering, core is working one more time, and then child's pose, untuck your toes, forehead rest, arm sweep back. As you allow your body to soften into this shape, remember that child's pose is always available to you without, with, throughout your practice. Let your arms come into whatever organization allows your shoulders to get a little heavier. And then just feel for the breath moving through your body. Feel for the space of your abdomen kind of rising and falling in the base of your pelvis, between the lines of your legs. Feel the ribs responding to that movement of the breath. The spine lengthens as you breathe in. It widens and it softens as you breathe out. And just one more breath. And stretching the arms up and overhead. Take a breath in, lift your heart. Slide your hands back towards your thighs. Interlace the fingers behind your head. Elbows go wide. The uh, edges or the heels of your hands squeeze into the sides of your head. And then kind of lift and lengthen up. So feel that the cervical spine or the neck gets a little bit more space as the chin slightly draws in. Then opening the elbows, tip your heart up, lean back. As you exhale, squeeze your elbows in, tuck your chin and round through your back. Inhale, open up, arch back, squeeze between your shoulders. Exhale, coil around and spread in the upper back. One more time, breathe in, lift up. And exhale into neutral. Keep your elbows wide. Take a breath in, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, tip towards the right, left elbow stretching up. Head pushes back into the hands, hands press back into the head. Breathe up in through the left side. Could you get a little bit more lean to that? And then inhale, center. And exhale, tip to the left. That right elbow is reaching up, reaching over. Right hip is staying heavy. This could always be done in seated. You do not need to be in hero's pose. And then back up towards center. Take a breath in, arch through your spine. Exhale, coil and round. Release your arms as you breathe in, reach to the sky. And as you breathe out, downward facing dog. Send the legs up and back, pedal out through your feet, your knees. Find some heaviness in your heels, maybe sway your hips. So notice how that feels in your body. And downward facing dog can always be replaced with tabletop for pretty much everything that we might see from here on out. Come back towards center, heels come up high, roll forward like a wave into your plank. Pull the energy of your hands back as you drag the energy of your feet forward. Find that external rotation. So we're trying to find the muscles that surround your armpit and get them to light up a little bit. Pull them, the belly button in and up. Don't be afraid to drop down into your knees. 
Then we're going to bend our elbows and lower for five, four, three, two. Tummies touch the ground. Lift your heart. Breathe in cobra pose. Exhale and soften your cobra back down. Very little weight in your hands at all. Lift your heart. Keep your toenails down. And exhale to lower back. Hands press. Hearts lift. Reach up a little. Soften the heart strings back down. No weight at all in the hands. Lift your heart. And lower. Pull back with your hands. Hearts up. Cobra pose. And lower. Hands reach back behind you. Interlace the fingers. Roll the shoulders back and down. And then as you lift up, heart reaches, hands might peel off the lower back. You do not need to take this variation. Can you find that your toenails press down into the floor? Little more emphasis on your baby toe rooting, root, rooting down. Shoulders up, chest up, hearts up. Do not release the upper body, but release your hands and hold for three. Two, imagine you're pulling them together. Bend your elbows, bring your hands back down by your sides. Lift your heart up a little higher. Downward facing dog, everything draws up and back. We'll take that right leg high to the sky, breathe it in. We'll step that right foot forward right between the hands, breathe in out. Take an inhale into your lunge, chest rises. Exhale, straighten out that right thigh, pull back. Breathe in, bend your right knee. Exhale, pull back. One more time to bend that right knee. Now, as you exhale, pull back and hold. Your left hand can always be on a block if you happen to have that. Today's practice, that is really useful. Take your right thumb into your right hip crease and pull that right hip back more. So I'm sliding the idea of my left thigh into my right. And then roll that right shoulder back. Take your right hand, reach it straight back behind you. Reach it down towards the floor and then reach it up towards the sky and turn your chest with it. Reach it back, down, keep your legs squeezing together and up towards the ceiling. One more time, but now leave your chest in one fixed spot. So as my right arm reaches up towards the sky, I wanna hold it there, the thumb is facing forward. And I wanna turn it the other way so I get internal rotation of my right shoulder. Then rotate it the other way, baby finger fights to come forward external. Internal shoulder falls almost downwards, thumb reaches back and then turn. As you do this, you have an X on the bicep of your arm. So try to move from your bicep, not your wrist. One more time, internal, that shoulder head should feel low. And then external hold there, chest up, reach through your heart. Right hand comes down, step forward, let it go. Halfway lift, lengthen your body. Fold and empty your breath out. Inhale, rise and reach to get up towards standing. And exhale your hands to your heart, breathe it in. Pause, root down through your feet, firm up through your thighs. Find that energy of rolling your shoulders back and down without force. Reach the arms up towards the sky, a great big breath in. Forward fold, let it come all the way down. And halfway lift, lengthen. Downward facing dog, step back. Roll forward like a wave in towards your plank. And from that plank position, know that you can come down onto your forearms. I'm going to walk those feet out just a little bit wider, zip up through that lower belly, externally rotate through the upper arm. And then heels go right, center, left, right, left, right, left. Take out the center pause if you can. Shoulders don't move. Lower body is moving for you today. For three and two. And that last little one, plank, bend your elbows, chaturanga, all the way down to the floor, lift your heart, shoulders remained back, downward facing dog, hips pull you up and back. Left leg goes high to the sky, breathe it in. And left foot steps forward as you breathe out. Inhale, chest up, hearts open. Exhale, straighten out that left leg, pull back. Rebend the knee, travel into that lunge. Exhale, pull back. One more time. As the left leg pulls back, hold it there. Always know that you can bring that right hand up onto a block. I highly, highly encourage it. I want you to take that left thumb, stick it back in that left hip crease, and pull the left hip back as you squeeze the right thigh forward. You're pressing down through that left big toe mount. It hasn't lifted yet. 
then radiate your chest forward. Feel that activation through your upper back. So I don't want to round. That left arm is going to reach back behind you and then reach it up towards the sky. Follow it with your chest and then take it down towards the floor. Reach it back, lift it up and circle it back and down. So that one more time, and as you lift, I want to pause my chest and let my arm finish the circle without my chest following. So as that left arm reaches up towards the sky, I'm going to hold it there. The thumb faces forward. That right shoulder pulls back. My thigh is squeezed together. Chest radiates forward. Then can I uh, find that external rotation? It's like I'm pulling my baby finger forward and internal rotation. I go the other way. And as you do this, I'm trying to move from the bicep of my left arm, not from my wrist. My thighs squeeze together. I'm keeping my upper back long, and my chest hasn't changed its organization. Okay. The more energy I run through that arm, the more low that the tissues are getting, the happier over time that shoulder will be once you're ready. Okay, so chest up, shoulders draw back, reach up through that, keep a little more neutral shoulder, slightly externally rotated. Then take that left arm down towards the floor, step forward, let it go. Halfway lift, lengthen your tissues. Fold and empty to release them. Inhale, rise, reach all the way up. And hands to your heart as you let it go. Reach it up towards the sky, great big breath in. Forward fold, take it down low. Halfway lift, lengthen. Downward facing dog, step back. Good, walk your feet out a little bit wider. Take a breath in. And then reach that right arm towards your left leg if that serves. Bend that right elbow, reach underneath your chest. Maybe look under that left armpit. Give yourself that little sniff test. Right hand comes down. And then step your feet together. As you exhale, bend your knees, bring them down towards hovering tabletop. Stretch the legs back, heels down, and walk your feet out a little bit wider. Hands press forward, left arm comes under, cross to that right side, exhale, bend your elbow, twist under. Stay for a breath. Left hand comes down, feet come in, roll, bend your knees, hover. Hips up, heels down, walk them out, plank, wider legs, forearm version of plank. Feel free to monitor how much you need. You can stay right here, you can drop your knees, you can hold it steady. I'm going to push down through my forearms, pull back on my elbows. The feet stay wide, and then this time I'm going to try to tap the floor with my outer hip. So right hip down, tap, center, left hip down. Tap and over and over and over. Not a lot of them. Three, two, and that last little one, hold. Lower yourself to the floor. Slide your hands back. See if you can interlace the fingers. If not, hands onto your lower back. But if you can interlace, we're going to add in a little bit. So you're going to roll your shoulders back, lift your heart up, hands hover. Feet are welcome to leave the floor for this one, but choose it. Think about pulling down still with the baby toe edge of your toenails. Now I want you to find this idea of squeezing your hands towards each other. Release your fingers, hold. Squeeze the idea of your palms in. See if your elbows can be really straight and your triceps really active. Good. Bend your elbows, root your toes, lift your heart, cobra or up dog. Then downward facing dog, hips pull you up and back. Right leg goes high to the sky, breathe it in. Right knee towards your nose, round and roll forward. Step your right foot through, take a breath into lunge. Exhale, straighten out that right leg. Again, breathe in, hearts up. Exhale, pull back. One more time. Now this time as you exhale, pull back, stay. Lift your chest, come up into your fingers, bend your right knee. You're coming all the way up to standing if you can. So we're going to push the arms back, squeeze through our triceps, and reach with the hands. And then stand up, take your left leg with you as your arms reach up. 
Right hand crosses over to left thigh. Left arm presses back behind you. Hips stay facing forward. Gaze goes wherever you need. Think about pressing your left hand, or sorry, your left leg into your right hand. Good. Option to reach down, take the baby toe edge of that left foot and extend the left leg forward. Good. Soften the left knee. Reach for your arms. Leg can stay straight or bent. Wherever you're going to go, you're in a cartwheel. Left hand comes down as the left leg goes back and right arm comes up towards the sky. Option for that left foot to be on the floor. Chest up, shoulders back. Option to keep that left foot hovering. Revolved half moon pose. Squeeze the shoulders back. Kick out through that left heel and pull the outer crease of that right hip back as that left thigh squeezes in. Good. And now I'm going to bend both of my knees, try to tuck my left knee behind my right calf. And as I push my left leg back, warrior two, drop it down and reach out through your arms. Inhale, reach that right arm up and over, stretch out through the right side body. Exhale and cartwheel, both hands down towards the floor. Right leg goes up and back, three-legged dog. And then option here, look forward. Keep that right leg high, bend your elbows, place your forearms on the floor. Okay, one little breath. Bend that right knee, open up through your hip. Push the floor away. Now look forward, stretch your right leg back. Plank, chaturanga. Tops of the feet to the floor, cobra or up dog. Downward facing dog, draw your hips up and back. Breath in, breath out. Energy in, grounding as you breathe out. Left leg high, knee to nose. Left leg through, hearts up. Stretch back, pull from that left outer hip. Rebend, stretch back. Once more, rebend, stretch back, hold it back. Stay right there, scissor through the thighs. Chest up, shoulders back, get higher on your fingertips and bend that left knee a little bit. You're gonna push the arms back, squeeze through your triceps. Think about lifting up with your thumbs. Even more, shoulders hug in and then lean into that left foot and try to rise. Arms reach up as the right knee comes in towards your chest. Then that left hand towards the right thigh and that right arm reaches back behind you. Looking down is easiest, but settle the gaze wherever you feel is best. As you twist open, can we keep the hips facing forward and allow that rotation to be from the upper, upper back, upper body space? Okay, stay right there or reach down, catch the outer edge of that right foot and extend. I still want to feel like I'm pulling my right hip back a little bit, hugging my left thigh in. As I gently let go of that right foot, keep the shape and then cartwheel. Right hand comes down as the left arm reaches up and the right leg goes back. So take your time, set your right hand on the block floor. If you have to, I like block more than the floor or that right foot comes all the way down into the ground like we did the first round. I want you to kick up through that right leg if it's lifted, squeeze the inner thighs together and rotate that chest more towards your left. Think about pulling the left hip crease back, squeezing your right thigh in, rotating from that upper body. Good. And then as steadily as we can, feel the weight in your left foot, bend your knees, try to tuck yourself into a small little ball, and then pushing out of that left foot, right foot comes down, 
Warrior two, reach your arms open wide. Inhale to exalt your warrior, take that left arm up and over. And as you exhale, we'll cartwheel both hands down towards the floor. That left leg goes up and back, three-legged dog. Then bend your elbows, bring your forearms down towards the floor, hold. Open up that left hip if you like, let it reach back behind you. Push the forearms down, make sure we're not dropping into our shoulders, but pressing out of the floor. Left leg straightens out, look forward, chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. And then downward facing dog or child's pose. Take a moment, close your eyes. Find your way into feeling your feet in the movement of your breath in your belly. This won't be too, too much longer in intensity. So I wanna give you one little heated place to play. And we move, we breathe, and we simply be in our bodies and in our breath. So let go of your expectations. Let go of this idea that it needs to be easy, or that it needs to be perfect. And just let it be. One breath, one body, you on your mat, moving. Downward facing dog. Walk your feet out a little bit wider. Take a breath in, press your hands forward. As you exhale, press your hips back. One more inhale. Right arm under to the left, exhale, bend your elbow. Right hand back. Now hop your feet in, bend your knees, hover. Good, hop your feet out, downward facing dog. Take a breath in, left arm crosses. Center, hover. Hop out, heels down. Hop in, bend your knees. Hop out, heels down. Bend, straighten. Bend, straighten, but soft knees. Bend, hop it out. Bend, hop it out. One more time, bend and hold for three. Pull hands back, thighs forward. Two, right foot hovers. Three-legged dog, take your right leg up. Right foot steps forward, take a breath out. Inhale, heart's high. Exhale, straighten. Standing in splits, breathe in. Fold deeper, breathe out. Inhale all the way up towards standing. Take your time, exhale, both feet together, chair pose, swim your arms up towards the sky. Hands go back behind you, interlace. Offer the heart up, breathe in. Fold heart towards thigh, breathing out. Shoulders back, find some play. Hands can be wherever they need to. And release your hands to the floor. Find that lift into your heart halfway. Left leg, or sorry, right leg goes back. Heart rolls up. Straighten out that left leg. Pull that left arm up back towards the ceiling. So we're in that revolved version of triangle pose. Right shoulder hugs back. Left shoulder draws in towards that right side. Hug those inner thighs. And now I want you to keep that right hand on the floor. Allow your toes to spin out a little bit. So you're on the baby toe edges of both of your feet. And that left knee is going to have a little bit of a bend. And then see if that left knee can bend even more. Push the baby toe edge of your left foot into the floor. And then sink the hip down a little bit. But the more you push that baby toe edge forward, the more you're going to feel this in the outer edge of your left hip. Go for that. Knee is bent, foot is active, and it's pushing away from you. Then let's lower the pelvis all the way down, bend your right leg, and stack your thighs so you're in a seated shape. We're gonna take that right arm underneath our left, grab for opposite shoulders, forearms, or fingers. Elbows come upwards. And if it feels suitable in your body, lean your chest forward, let your fingers face away from you, spreading between the shoulder blades. Rooting down into your hips, making sure there's no discomfort in your knees. If you feel it in your knees, you let the shape go. And then lift the chest back up. 
unravel your body, but you're going to spin all the way around to the right as your feet and thighs untangle, and then standing forward fold in a wide straddle, pushing the outer edges of your feet apart, allow your chest to fold down towards the floor. Maybe this time take that left arm towards the outside of the right leg, so it's similar to your downward facing dog if shape. And if it feels good in your body, you're gonna drop that left forearm or elbow to the ground. So wherever you wanna hold, find this idea of still pulling your right hip back a little bit. Chest can pull forward or you can keep it soft. Right hand can tuck back behind you or reach it up towards the sky. I want you to feel that right hip. So the one I'm holding onto, pulling away from my face. Now take that right arm, wrap it underneath your left towards that left leg. Let go of the left arm, bring that right elbow down-ish. Hug the hips back, open up through your heart, and then take that left arm wherever it is that serves you best. So I wanna feel that I'm not internally rotated. I've opened up some space in the front of my shoulder. I'm pulling my left hip back a little bit more because it feels more interesting in my body. I'm opening up through my chest to the way that it works for me. And then stay down here, bring your left hand to the floor, look at it. Turn all the way to the front of your space, drop your right knee down towards the ground. And then reaching that left arm up, reach it back and see if you wanna take a bind to that right foot. If it's too much for you, you don't need to take the bind, just bring your left hand inside of your left leg. Okay. five breaths. If you are in that bind, think about pulling your hips back towards that heel and then tucking the tail under. It's like I'm moving my front hip bones into my rib cage and I'm drawing my ribs down to meet it. Right foot down. Left leg goes back, downward facing dog. Walk those feet out a little bit wider so you don't have to add in this part if you don't want to. I want a little extra push today. So I'm gonna go for creating a little bit more dynamics, but feel free to hold steady. Okay, one breath. Exhale, bend your knees, hover your table. Press up, bend. Hop out, and bend. Knees can stay soft and bend. Hop and bend just for fun two more hop it stretch it hop it stretch it last one hold it hover table pull hands back thighs forward left leg takes a hover three-legged dog left leg up left knee towards your nose round roll and step it through breathe and lift your heart exhale stretch back rebound the knees standing splits inhale stretch it out even deeper exhale Come all the way up towards the standing leg shape. And then both feet to the floor, chair pose. Reach your arms up. Reach your hands back. Take the weird interlace off of your chest. And then fold. If ever you feel you get a little dizzy, heart stays up. You don't have to drop your head. Find space in your shoulders. Give them a roll. Figure out where they need to be placed. And release the hands down, lift your heart halfway. Left leg goes back, breathing out. Right leg straightens, right arm reaches up towards the sky, open it up. I'm pulling the crease of that right hip back and breathing in through the outreach of my arms. I wanna find that this shape feels strong and steady and ready for my body. You don't have to take it anywhere. Find the space that works for you. That left hand is gonna stay on the floor and now I'm gonna to pivot to the baby toe edges of my feet, flexing my feet and allowing that right knee to bend. As the right knee bends, I'm gonna push the baby toe edge of that foot into the floor and forward-ish. And then I'm gonna play, how much knee bend do I want? How much hip sag do I want? To actually make this feel active and engaged. It's still in a stretch, it's an external rotation, but it needs to have the ability to be active. So can I find that active range of motion for my body? If I sink it down more, I lose some of it. 
And, and then lower that left hip all the way down to the floor, bending that left knee. Drawing the right leg over top of the left or cross-legged. And then right arm reaches over left, grab for opposite shoulders, forearms or fingers. Take a breath in. And then if it's available to you, lean forward. Think about moving your fingers away from your forehead and snuggling the hips down into the floor. When you're practicing, I want you to choose your shapes, not your body. The way we default into things, the way we move through things is usually going to be wherever there's the least amount of limitations. But that is not the best way to practice. It's that you're making choices the entire time. So weaker spaces get stronger and stronger spaces get space. Good. Lift your chest up, reach your arms up, take a nice big breath in. Then we untangle our body as we move back towards the front edge of the mat. The legs uncross and we'll come into a wide position with the legs. Toes in, heels out. And then you're going to lean your chest forward towards the floor. Now, option is you can take one hand over to each side. Or option two, you might go crisscross with your hands. That might need a slightly shorter space between your legs. And then for a lot of you, I want to make sure that you're not going to choke yourself out with your top arm. So we want to feel that we're moving the shoulders slightly away from our earlobes. That tip of the tailbone is rising up. My spine is softening down. I'm not rounding through my back or forcing. And then I'm pressing the outside edges of my feet apart and trying to lift my kneecaps up. It's a really active shape. If our one arm crossed, can you switch which one is on top? Notice where your weight goes in your feet. Play with leaning slightly forward and play with leaning slightly back. Find your center. Take that right arm out of the bind. Look to the front edge of your space. Right hand reaches and then follow it. Drop your left knee down, reach your right arm up towards the sky, and then reach back and take a bind if you choose. So again, instead of sinking into my hips, I want to pull my hips back towards my heels. And then I'm squeezing my left glute, and I'm trying to lift the front of my left hip bone up towards my chest. And my chest is going down to meet it. And then we'll release that left foot down, hands down, take it back, downward facing dog. One more vinyasa if you'd like to find it, but we're gonna meet in child's pose. So take it, play with it, create something, you're in your own home, maybe add in a little dolphin, maybe add in a little scorpion, and then eventually we just meet, hips towards heels, forehead towards the ground, and allow your arms, your belly, your eyes to soften. Two more breaths. And then take your time, come back up to a seated shape, shuffle the legs off into any direction that you choose, and then send the legs out in front. So in our wind down shape, the legs are going to be invited to be straight. They don't have to be together and they don't have to be straight. So what I want you to first find is that there's awareness in your pelvis. If I'm in that posture, your tilt and the tailbone is kind of tucking underneath me and I'm rounding to my lower back. 
that's your signal to either roll up the back edge of your mat to lift up through your hips or to bend your knees. Okay? And if you're bending your knees, I like a block or even better, <laughs> since I have it here, a bolster. So that I'm not working to keep the knee bend, the knee bend's just there. And so I'm able to articulate that natural curve into my lower back. Then I'm going to fold my chest towards my thighs. Allow the arms to rest in a position that is comfortable. Allow your head to drop. I'm not really going to do that while I talk. And breathing through the back channel of your body from the very roots of your heels to the crown of your head. And see if you can check in and make sure that there isn't lingering tension in your body, in your mind, in your hands, in your grip. But more of a sweetness of surrender. One more breath here. hands find the floor and the heart begins lift keep the eyes closed if you can you can take a moment to cross your ankles and arrive in a seated shape you could turn off the video and come to rest on your back which i highly recommend wherever you are try to give yourself an opportunity to root Whatever is touching the floor, let it ground you for a moment. And whatever is able to lift and rise, let it lift and rise, knowing that its foundation is strong. Soften the space in your jaw and your eyes. Consider for a moment a positive word, phrase, feeling. And move that through your body with your breath. The power to turn inwards is always there. And in that inward reflection, we grow stronger. The light of me bows to the light within you. Namaste.